Looking somewhat incongruous, nestled amongst small modern houses and next to a small playground in the suburb of Enfield, north of Adelaide, South Australia, is Barton Vale House, a two-storey mansion of 31 rooms, built in 1857 for Edmund Bowman. When it was built, there was little more than farmland surrounding the 21-acre estate for miles around, but suburbia gradually crept closer and closer. The orange orchard, the lawns and the flower gardens, vanished along with a sweeping drive edged by trees. Bowman, who lived between 1818 and 1866, was an early settler whose family grew wealthy from the pastoral industry. He drowned when he fell from a bridge at another property he owned at Port Wakefield. Extensively remodelled in 1881, his family continued to live in the house until the early 1920s. Two of Edmund's descendants were victims of the infamous Sundown murders, committed in the outback in 1957. In 1922, the property was sold to the Salvation Army for £2,600 and became a reformatory for teenage girls in August of that year, replacing the former Red Ruth Jail at Borough. Girls convicted of minor offences such as stealing, prostitution or vagrancy were sent to the home to be rehabilitated from their former lives. Up to 45 girls could be accommodated at the site. Although better conditions were provided at Barton Vale than at Redruth, girls began absconding in the mid-1920s and it was criticised for being behind the times in 1930, following a riot in July of that year. The records available to play on the gramophone were all of hymns. The girls needed some jazz, as well as an occasional picture show, according to one critic. About 30 girls rebelled at 8pm when it was time to be locked into their dormitories. They screamed and shouted and smashed doors and electric light globes. In the hubbub, two of the girls climbed out a broken window, down a drain pipe, and fled before police arrived to help calm the situation. Ringleaders taken away continued to sing and shout in cells until the early morning hours. Asked why they had gone on a rampage, one girl said that they were fed up with everything. A typical day for the girls would have been to awaken at 7am, breakfast at 730 then cleaned the house until 9.30, when they had a free half hour. At 10am they would perform duties such as sewing, cooking, laundry or gardening. Tea was served at 5, and the rest of the evening was free. On winter evenings, reading, table games and sewing passed the time. In summer they had swings and tennis courts, and some of the girls grew flowers. The two absconders were free for 10 days before being recaptured at the Adelaide Hospital. The original tower was removed in 1944 due to structural concerns. A replacement tower of modern lightweight materials was added in recent years. In 1947, responsibility for running the home transferred to the state government, who renamed Barton Vale to Vaughan House. Trouble continued to occur with the girls. A 14-year-old was broken out by her 26-year-old boyfriend, Giuseppe Leonardi, and one of his friends on the 7th of November 1947. The two made it to Melbourne before they were apprehended. Leonardi was jailed for six months in January 1948. On the 1st of October 1949, two 16-year-old girls smashed a window and escaped. They went to Seaton where they broke into a house and cut their hair short before stealing men's clothes to disguise themselves. They stole two bicycles and a tarpaulin and camped out at West Beach, a race course and in the Adelaide foothills on their four-day escapade. Noticed acting strangely near Parliament House, they were arrested and returned to Barton Vale. But not for long. Eleven days later, on the 15th of October, they again escaped, this time for only 36 hours. They replicated their previous jaunt, this time stealing bicycles from Woodville and cycling to West Beach. Their disguise of men's trousers, jerseys, army-style berets and boots were stolen from a building site and a tarpaulin, fruit and drinks were taken from the West Beach kiosk. They made a camp in bushes in sand dunes with the tarpaulin, which though decently well hidden was discovered by the kiosk owner, who phoned police. While most girls were found and returned, one 16 year old chose to end her life when she fled in 1952, leaping from the top of a city building. In January 1953, a 17 year old charged with being uncontrollable demanded to know of the magistrate why she couldn't go to jail. Having already spent time at Vaughan House, she said she'd rather go to jail. 
Maybe she was one of the trio of two 17-year-olds and a 15-year-old who escaped in April and stole £44 worth of clothing from an Ovingham home, who giggled and made loud comments when charged in juvenile court after their capture. On the evening of the 15th of December 1953, a group of girls made it onto the roof and held a protest, yelling abuse at staff and police who arrived to help contain the situation. Two days later, five of the girls fled. Three were found at a house with boyfriends, and the other two were located in the city. One of the 17-year-olds was sent to jail to finish her sentence. When the girls weren't causing trouble, outsiders were. In March 1949, somebody was flashing a torch into the building and whistling at night, whether as some sort of signal to a resident, or in an attempt to peep at the girls was not known, although the previous afternoon a man had behaved obscenely as the matron and some girls were walking in the gardens. During the 1960s and 1970s, sexual impropriety became more frequent, something which was endemic in government-run children's homes of the time. In 1979, the name of the facility was changed again, this time to the unromantically bureaucratic South Australian Youth Remand and Assessment Centre. It was used for both boys and girls until closure in 1993, when a new facility was constructed at Cavan. For a time, Barton Vale stood derelict, and there were suggestions it be bulldozed. It was during this time of abandonment that curiosity seekers visiting the house began to spread rumours that Barton Vale was haunted. Since then, the building has been purchased and renovated and is now a private residence once more. Local paranormal expert Alan Tiller investigated the claims of hauntings, but found no evidence for anything ghostly in the old building.